Hi students, welcome to today's lecture on Python programming. In our earlier session, we have discussed about uh, uh, the conditional iteration using while loop, and we have gone through a few example programs also that demonstrates uh, the uses of while loops for solving the real world problems. Today, we will focus on a few fundamental topics. Uh, we'll start a discussion on uh, uh, strings concepts and then uh, uh, a set of operators that can be performed on uh, uh, strings. Then we discuss about uh, a simple application uh, of uh, these strings. Uh, that is, uh, we, we will understand what is meant by a data encryption and uh, how this uh, strings kind of data uh, is encrypted and then uh, uh, forwarded to the receiver where uh, the data gets decrypted. So today we will be learning these two topics, some basics of strings concept and then uh, uh, data encryption and decryption. Okay, so let us start our today's session. Starting with uh, the introduction to strings. We know that uh, string is a collection of characters and also we know that uh, string is a immutable data object. What is meant by immutable? It means that once the string is created, we cannot alter or modify the string contents. That means uh, if you want to replace a character with another character, that is not possible. If you want to delete a character from the string, that is not possible and so on. So because modifications are not allowed on strings, it is called as a immutable data object. Okay. And generally, strings in Python are represented either by putting them inside a pair of single quotes or a pair of double quotes. So in uh, the C language that you learned, single quotation marks represent characters, whereas double quotation marks represent strings. But in Python, both these single quotation and double quotations represents strings only. Okay, so both of them represent string objects only. So whenever you write a Python program, either you put something inside the double quotes, a pair of double quotes, or you put something inside a pair of single quotes, both of them will be treated as string objects only. That, that is the first thing you need to understand. There is no difference between single quotation marks and double quotation marks in Python. Both of them are used for representing string object only. Okay, so here is a sample uh, uh, output given. Even if I represent a string in double quotes, while the output is produced, it is showing in single quotes only. Okay, similarly, an empty pair of double quotes returns an empty pair of single quotes. However, if you put a character inside single quote or a string in single quote, it does not matter. It produces a single quote string. Okay. So uh, the way you represent the strings, either using single quotes or double quotes, the system is going to return the strings in the form of single quotation marks only. That is the point you need to understand. <clears throat> and while working with the strings, we need to know uh, to perform certain important operations on strings, uh, such as uh, finding the length of a particular string and so on. So we'll see some very important uh, operations that can be performed on string objects now. We'll begin with this length function, which returns the number of characters of a string. So this is how you can call the len function, len of hi there. It returns the number of characters, including spaces also. So for example, this particular string 
which is put inside a pair of double quotes contains nine characters it is saying let us count down the characters individually one two space includes three four five six seven eight and nine so it contains nine characters empty strings do not have any length therefore uh, length of an empty string is going to be zero okay so this is the first important function you need to understand len function okay uh, for example i'll show you uh, say i am creating a string variable x is equals to uh, initialize it uh, using some uh, high okay now if you want to call the len function on this len of x will return the number of characters in that string assigned to x that means two okay so this will return an answer two right so this is a simple introduction to strings concept and the function len returns the number of characters of a particular string again i'm reminding you the strings can be represented either uh, using a pair of single quotes or using a pair of double quotes okay both are perfectly valid in python the next important operator is subscript operator which is represented as a pair of angle brackets like this okay and in general the subscript operator is used uh, to select a particular character from the string object okay so the general syntax is like this the string object followed by a pair of double quotes and some integer expression that extracts a particular character that means this is generally going to be uh, the index of the corresponding character okay you can simply write it as index of the character which you want to extract okay now let us see some examples over here name is equals to alan turing that is the string initialized to name now if you write name of zero it will extract the first character okay because the index begins from zero indexes in strings begins from zero to length minus one assuming that n is the length of uh, uh, the string zero to n minus one will be the indexes of the corresponding string so if you say name of zero it returns the first character that is capital a similarly if you look at this name of three it returns zero one two three so n will be returned because the index of fourth character is three okay so that is how you need to understand and look at this example name of len of name what is len of name it is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so length of name is 11 characters right so it is saying length of name is 11 and name of 11 is nothing because if the length of string is 11 then the index begins at 0 and ends at 10 so there is no character at 11th position right therefore name of 11 returns an index error it produces an index error saying that string index out of range because the valid range is from 0 to 10 only uh, where the length of the string is 11. So always remember that the valid indexes in a particular string spans from 0 to n minus 1 where n is the n of uh, number of uh, characters in the string. Okay, so that is the reason why this produces an error. You need to be careful enough to check whether the given index is out of the range or not. If it is out of the range, it will produce a syntax error. Okay. Then uh, look at this uh, next example. Length of name, it is 11. 
minus 1 it returns 10 so this expression returns 10 now it is saying name of 10 what is name of 10 the last character that returns g okay so that should be the answer similarly we can specify the negative indexes also in python in c language it is invalid it is erroneous to uh, submit the negative indexes in uh, arrays but in uh, python we can use negative indexes to represent uh, the characters from um, right hand side rhs okay that means if you want to refer to the last character of the string you can specify it as a minus one this minus says that look from the end of the string and this one says that the character from the last that means uh, name of minus one is the last character in the string okay or we can read it as the first character from end of the string the first character from the end of string is g so it will be returned here name of minus two similarly means that the second character from the end of string so what is the second character from end of string 1, 2. So this returns n. Okay. So negative indexes are also valid in strings in Python. Okay. You can refer to the characters by specifying the negative indexes that refers from the end of string and counting uh, backwards. Okay. That means name of minus n or something like this name of minus i specifies that ith character from end of the string okay so you need to remember this ith character from end of the string that is how you need to understand Right. So this is uh, uh, another basic uh, operation. Right. Now let us uh, move on to the next topics. We'll see a few more uh, operations on this. A very important operation um, that is performed on strings. This is important for your examination point of view also. The slicing operation, which returns uh, the substrings. Okay the process of obtaining substrings from a string by specifying the range of subscripts is called as slicing okay so i repeat the process of obtaining substrings by specifying a range of indexes is called as slicing we do that slicing operation by using this colon operator so all of you remember this we will make use of colon operator to perform this slicing operation okay now let us understand this slicing operation and uh, the ways uh, of doing this slicing operation with the examples the first example is uh, i'm defining a string here name is equals to my file dot txt so this is the string i am initializing into this string object okay now name of zero colon and there is no value specified after colon it means that starting from the character at 0th index till the last character that means the last index so if you do not mention anything after that colon symbol it picks the last index of the string okay so 0 to last index that means the entire string so it produces my file dot txt okay then uh, name of 0 to 1 you are specifying both the ends of the range here so it means that from index 0 to also specified here because it is specified as 1 it excludes this uh, index specified okay 1 minus 1 is 0 therefore it picks uh, 0 to 0 that means the first character only okay the only character at 0th index it picks. 
Now let us increase that uh, range after that colon. So starting from zero, you are specifying it as two. Therefore, it picks one character before that two. That means zero to one. So it picks up to my. Zero eighth index, first index. So this range second value is excluded always. This is excluding. Okay, excluding means. Do not consider the index two. Consider up to the indexes less than two. That is the meaning. So zero to one will be considered. That returns this uh, substring m y. Similarly, you can omit the starting range. So before column, if it is empty, it means that you are specifying zero here. Okay, zero to len of name. It means that the length of entire string, for example, it is going to be uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the length is 10. You are specifying it as 0 to 10, which means that it picks from 0 to 9, index 0 to 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the entire string it is taking. Okay. Because uh, if the length is 10, it means that the last index is 9, 10 minus 1. You can specify the negative indexes also. Uh, this one represents name of minus 3, 2. Uh, nothing is mentioned here. This minus 3 specifies that from the last three characters you need to pick. You need to pick the last three characters of the string. Okay. And similarly, if you mention 2 to 6 here, it takes 2 to 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 0, 1, here onwards, the index 2 begins, 2, 3, 4, 5 is up to this 5. So it returns 5. Okay. So the slicing operation is very important because it returns substrings. Whenever you process a particular string, if you want to uh, select a pattern of substrings based on the application requirement, then uh, uh, you can use this slicing operation that returns substrings. Okay. So this is very important for your examination point of view also. So please practice all these examples with IDLE also. Okay. So another important operation is uh, whether a particular substring is part of the string or not uh, with the help of uh, membership operator in. So we already saw this uh, membership operator uh, while discussing about the types of operators in Python. So anyhow, I'll be explaining this uh, one more time. In operator tests whether the substring is part of a particular string or not. Okay, so let us... Uh, create a file list here. This is going to be a collection of strings or list of strings, you can say. So for file name in file list, I'm checking if dot txt in file name. So which means that I want to pick only the file names which ends with the dot txt. Okay. So I want to select these two only. Therefore, uh, for each file name in file list, this file name points to this first, okay? And then in second iteration, it points to this. And in third, third iteration, it points to this, okay? In each iteration, it checks whether uh, .txt in the corresponding file name or not. If so, if it contains .txt, then we will print the corresponding file name. Therefore, uh, when it points to the myfile.txt in the first iteration, it matches this .txt, therefore it gets printed. So the output is myfile.txt. And in the second iteration, file name points to this myprogram.exe because it does not contain .txt here, it will not be printed. Okay, this will not be printed because it is failed. There is no .txt in this file name. And in third iteration, it gets your file.txt. This time, this will be true. .txt is going to be true because it contains a .txt in the file name. Therefore, we'll print it, okay? So this is printed for the third file name. That is your file.txt gets printed, right? So we can use this in operator uh, like this to test whether 
a particular substring is part of this string or not by using these conditions. Okay. So practice this example also. Membership operators are very uh, important in examination point of view also. So please practice it. Both uh, examples for in operator as well as uh, not in operator. Right. So that is about uh, uh, a simple introduction to string operations. Okay. Of course, we'll see more string methods in our next session, next uh, class that we are going to discuss. But before that, we need to see a simple application of the string data. Okay. So let us start with this data encryption concepts. So what is meant by this data encryption actually? We need to understand this uh, uh, introduction, introductory part. Maybe you heard about this data encryption concepts in uh, first year. Okay, I think fundamentals of computers, you have a subject. So let us understand this. When your computer or laptop is connected to a network, okay, and if you want to send uh, some data to some recipient, you will become sender. Okay, so sender is a computer which wants to send some information to some receiver. Okay, assume this scenario and to send the information to some receiver, definitely these two sender and receiver must have been uh, connected through a network. It may be a wired network or maybe a wireless network also. In most of the cases now, it's going to be a wireless network. Okay, now assume that you are sending some information here. Let us say it is soil and you are not using any encryptions are sending the test directly to the corresponding receiver and because you are using a wireless network or wired network it is always possible that some intruder may steal your information in between that means while traveling traveling from sender to receiver some intruder may come in and get your data and because if there is no protection it is easy to get your data to the corresponding intruder Okay, so how do you avoid this data stealing by an intruder when your information travels through a network? That is the concept of this data encryption. For that, what we will do is we will not send the information as it is. We will send some codes instead of high, the equivalent encrypted data, or we call it as a cipher text. So we send that cipher text, which is not understandable to the intruders even if they get it okay so we'll send the cipher text so this is not high now it's a cipher text the intruder gets because he do not understand this cipher text this will be even if he gets the data there will be of no use of it okay so you will send that cipher text to the receiver and the cipher text will be converted into a plain text at receiver end because both sender and receiver shares uh, uh, same kind of uh, uh, encryption and decryption techniques, which is unknown to this intruder. If he knows that encryption and decryption methods used by sender and receiver, then he can also get the original text, right? Which is almost impossible because sender and receiver will be having their own keys, the passwords which will not be disposed to anybody else. Therefore, there is no way that intruder gets your data, the cipher text, okay? So this is the importance of encryption techniques. Whenever you want to share your information to the others which are on your network, then what you will do is you will encrypt the message that you want to communicate and then you will send that encrypted message through the network when the receiver receives that uh, encrypted message, he will decrypt the message by using the same uh, method that is used for encryption. Okay, so that is what data encryption and decryption means. Now, there are several encryption techniques available, but we are not going to discuss all of them. Anyhow, you will be learning this uh, in a special subject called as cryptography and network security. Uh, uh, 
probably in third year, second semester or fourth year, first semester. You will learn entire, uh, there, there is a subject which deals with these concepts, but I just want to give a simple introduction about this data encryption and decryption here. Okay. So we'll be discussing a simple encryption technique called as Caesar cipher. So this is one uh, uh, example encryption technique that can be used. A Caesar cipher, what it does is uh, uh, it, it changes the characters uh, with a special uh, specified distance. For example, if you consider the distance as plus three, then uh, in Caesar ciphers, what, what they do is the original characters, uh, that is the characters of plain text are changed like this. Small a will be changed as small d because b is the third character of after a. Okay, so at a distance of three, it is saying Caesar cipher with distance three means that after a, the third character b c and d d is the third character after a therefore a is replaced by d similarly b is replaced by e similarly c is replaced by f and so on every character is replaced like that and uh, uh, once you reach this z x is replaced by a it, it is a circular way of replacement Okay, because W is mapping with Z, X will be mapping with A. After Z, it assumes that A is available. Okay, so X is replaced by A, Y is replaced by B, Z is replaced by C. So it's a circular replacement. Okay. Now, uh, having understood this, how the characters are replaced from plain text to cipher text using the Caesar cipher with a distance three. Let us take an example. Say, I just want to uh, use this CYZ. This is my string. I want to send it from uh, uh, one place to another place through the network. So, this will be converted into the corresponding C is converted as F. Okay, and Y is converted as B, so F, B, and Z is converted as C. So my actual text is C, Y, Z, but it is sent through the network as F, B, C. And once it is received at the other end of the network, that is at the receiver end, immediately he will perform minus three because it is, it is done at the sender side by performing a plus three distance of Caesar cipher. Then to convert this cipher text into original text, this receiver performs a minus three Caesar cipher there. Okay. So that sender and receiver must have been agreed with that. Okay. Then uh, uh, by applying minus three, what it is uh, getting is F with minus three returns a C. Okay. It goes back. B with minus three returns what? It is Y. So B with minus three goes back to Y. Z with minus three goes back to, I'm oh, sorry, C with minus three goes back to Z. So that is how the receiver gets the original text like this. Okay. So this is an important concept in computer networks terminology. So we need to uh, implement this encryption techniques with the help of Python. Okay, so we we'll try to implement this Caesar type uh, cipher with uh, distance three uh, and uh, we'll check it out whether it works or not. So look at this code. This will encrypt any given data with a distance three. Okay, or any specified distance. So for that reason, what I am doing here is I'm asking the user enter a one word lowercase message I'm asking to make it simple or he can, he can give any sentence also. It does not matter. And then uh, because Caesar ciphers 
are calculated with a specified distance. So I'm using this input end of the distance value I'm asking and then converting it into a number. In first case, I'm not converting it into number because I need a text itself, a string itself, okay? Now, uh, I call this as code, which is initially empty, the final one, which will be forwarded to the receiver. Okay. So now what, what I will do for encrypting the character centered by the user is, I will take one character at a time from the uh, given string, that is plain text, it is available in plain text. So CH points to one character in this plain text at a time, repeats until all the characters are completed. And we know that ORD function returns the ASCII value of the corresponding character. So I put it into a variable ORD value. Then I will calculate the cipher value by adding up the distance. ORD value plus distance will give us the ASCII value of the corresponding character at a specified distance. Okay. So if this cipher value go beyond the ASCII value of Z, then we need to uh, get the character by looking at, uh, for example, if it reaches Z, then uh, before that it will be A, B, C, and so on. Okay, so you need to recalculate which character is pointed by looking at in a cyclic way. So if cipher value is greater than ORD offset, then you need to get the corresponding character by using the formula cipher value is equal to ORD of A. So we will start at this position again, plus distance, the specified distance minus how many characters you need to move back. Okay, that extra characters. You will get that extra characters at ORD of Z minus ORD value plus one. This is definitely going to be a negative number because ORD value is definitely greater than ORD Z. So this returns a negative number that makes it distance plus the difference between ORD offset and ORD value we got. Okay, that means if you get uh, three characters backwards, then it returns C, the ASCII value of C like that. Okay, so once that cipher value is calculated, code is equal to code plus the character of cipher value. So we know that this function CHR returns the character equivalent to this uh, ASCII value. Cipher value is ASCII value, right? Because we calculated that ASCII value using ORD. Now it is again calculated as a character, equivalent character. So after completing this for loop, you will get that entire code into this variable because it is appended every time after calculating the Caesar cipher. And once it is completed, print that code that is cipher text to be forwarded to the receiver okay so this is how data encryption is done now let us understand this with uh, uh, the ideally by running this with an ideally we will check it out whether it is working properly or not by taking some example strings and how it actually converts i'm just copying this uh, let us go back to this ideally part Check it up. So ideally I have opened because it is a lines of code. I will open a new file. Okay, let us maximize this and paste the code. Save it. I'll save the program on desktop. Let us name it as encryption. So ENCR, I am saving it. Save. Now run this program, run module. So it is asking <clears throat> a one word lowercase message, enter a one word lowercase message it is asking. Okay. You can give any, any message there, that's not a big problem. Suppose I am giving hello. The distance is three. So it is converted into KH4R. The actual message, the plain text is hello. This is called plain text, which we want to communicate. It is not directly sent to the receiver. It is converted into a cipher text like this with the help of Caesar cipher technique. Okay. And this will be forwarded to the receiver. Now, even if some intruder gets this KHOR, 
he do not know what exactly we are trying to communicate with the receiver right so that is how it works okay so that is about data encryption then uh, the decryption also we need to understand uh, encryption sends uh, the cipher text to the receiver where the receiver must be performing a reverse process to get that original data okay so because we are using a caesar cipher with the plus 3 distance here uh, the receiver must also have known that information that at sender side it is converted using a caesar cipher we must have that information converted with a caesar cipher plus three distance this information must be available at receiver otherwise he cannot get the original text okay so if he has that information then what he will do is after getting that assume that these two are available this is cipher text and this is the distance known to the receiver again anyhow of course because we are writing a program here we are just taking it from the user but it's okay but it is by default uh, known to the receiver and because we want to convert the cipher text into plain text initially we do it as an empty string and again for ch in code ch points to one character at a time in this uh, cipher text available in code okay so we'll take one character and calculate the ascii value of that character place that value into ord value okay then calculate the cipher value by reproducing it with the minus 3 because plus 3 is done at the sender side at receiver side it has to be a minus 3 to get back that original string okay this is at sender side right at sender side it is calculated with plus 3 so to go back to the original string you have to perform a minus 3 caesar cipher at receiver end therefore the distance has to be subtracted here so ord value minus distance that brings the original character maybe that original character goes beyond that character a uh, we are testing it if cipher value is less than ord of a that means it, it goes beyond that a then you should come back in a circular way to select an appropriate character okay now cipher value is uh, calculated in that case as ord offset minus this time we are doing a minus distance minus ord of a minus ord value minus one in uh, sender side we did it as ORD of A plus distance. This time, because we need to go back, ORD of Z minus we are doing distance minus ORD of A minus ORD value minus one. This is definitely going to be a negative number, which uh, that is a positive number. ORD of Z minus positive number returns a number uh, going backwards from A. Okay. So once uh, it is calculated, plain text is equal to plain text plus the CHR function returns the character equivalent to this cipher value. Okay, this this testing and conversion is done only if uh, the cipher value goes beyond that a, goes less than ORD of a, then only it will be calculated using this formula. Cipher value is equals to ORD of z minus distance minus ORD of a minus ORD value minus one. Okay. Right. And finally, once the for loop is completed, you can print the uh, plain text after uh, getting the original text. So this is how the decryption process works at receiver side. We will check whether it works properly or not by uh, doing a simple check over the previous example. Okay. Let us copy this program and run it with the IDLE, go back to the IDLE. Again, I'm opening a new file. Let us paste the program. Save it. 
and saving it on desktop. Now I'll save it with a decryption because it is performing decryption operation. I'll save it as decree, save. Run the program using run module. It is asking the coded text. So I choose this cipher text khor and if i get this original text hello by using the decryption technique then uh, we did right okay so i'll view that khor as input and the same distance must be given because the sender and receiver must have been agreed upon that uh, same distance otherwise they don't get uh, uh, the text properly okay so that is the reason why i'm using the same distance value used by the sender that should be given okay so the receiver now has the information about the cipher text and the distance value see the text retrieved at the receiver end is hello which is the original text sent by the uh, sender okay so that is how the encryption and decryption works while communicating information from one place to another place through the networks. So we just understood a simple technique, a Caesar cipher technique for encrypting and decrypting purpose. And there are many advanced uh, encryption techniques available which are, for example, uh, we'll consider a black cipher. Black cipher is uh, an advanced encryption technique, which takes uh, uh, a group of characters at a time and converts them into encrypted characters. Okay, Caesar cipher performs uh, a simple conversion by uh, taking one character at a time, whereas uh, the black cipher takes a group of characters or black of characters at a time from the plain text and converts them into a black of encrypted characters with the help of uh, some matrix called as invertible matrix. Okay, So you can see the diagram. Uh, it, it shows uh, a simple uh, methodology or method used in uh, black cipher techniques. There are many black cipher techniques available. I'm not going to discuss about it. Just look at the structure of this black uh, cipher. You can consider any number of bits. For example, uh, if you are picking 64 bits at a time from the plain text black, then by applying the encryption technique, you require a key which is equal to uh, some size, uh, maybe 32 bits, 64 bits, and so on. Okay, it depends. 8 bits also, 16 bits. It depends on the technique you are using. So some key will be applied to convert that. Uh, 64 bit plain text into a cipher text which is uh, of same size of original text 64 bits right so this this kind of techniques are called as symmetric encryption techniques uh, that applies on blocks of data a maximum of uh, 128 bits can be encrypted at a time uh, by using uh, the advanced uh, uh, encryption techniques called as des aes rc6 idea all these are examples of black ciphers. You will definitely learn about all these cipher techniques uh, in your uh, cryptography and network security subject, which you will be learning in uh, either 3.2 or 4.1 level. Okay. So this is how uh, an advanced encryption technique works. Right. The, the important thing is a secret key is used in black ciphers which is crucial while converting the plain text, black of plain text into equivalent sized cipher text. Some black cipher techniques such as AES involves a number of uh, levels of encryption also to make it even more uh, difficult for the intruders to crack it. Okay, so more security. So you will learn about all these things later. Uh, as of now, I just want to introduce the concept of data encryption. I hope you understood what is a data encryption and decryption. And also you understood what is a Caesar cipher with the implementation. Okay. Right. Uh, that's all for today. Uh, I hope uh, these are simple topics uh, 
there is no difficulty in the topics today we have to discuss. I hope you understood that topics. Please uh, go through the topics again. Please practice the examples given in the slides. Okay. Uh, thank you all for your patient listening. See you in the next session. Thank you.